to start with our posture when we're sitting in our chair. So for every scale chunk that you perform, be sure to sit up on the front of your chair. To achieve good posture, try doing this. Lean forward until you feel a little bit of tension. Now lean back until the tension goes away. Now lean back even further until you feel the tension again. Now go back to that sweet spot right in between where you are tension free and sitting up tall. That is where you want to be when you perform. So as far as holding your instrument goes, we're gonna first talk about your right hand and what it does inside the bell. Now, the placement of your hand inside the bell should start with how your hand looks outside of the bell. A great trick to have really great positioning and placement of your hand is to just think about cupping your knee. So putting it over the top of your knee and then taking it away. Notice I don't have any spaces um, where air can slip in between my fingers, or you can think about the Miss America wave or the king or queen wave. And when you go to insert it into the bell of your instrument, try to put it on the far wall, just far enough in so that you feel the wall hit the first knuckle of your thumb. You don't wanna put it too far in to cut off the sound. And you also don't want to cover up the sound by closing your hand off. You wanna just make sure that it's on that far wall right up until you can feel that first knuckle of your thumb. Now for your left hand, for those of you who have a ring, most, which most of you will have, you can take your pinky and insert it into that ring and then just place your fingertips on top of the valves. You don't wanna completely cover the valves with your fingers or have too little of your fingers on, just the pads of your, of your fingers is just fine. Kind of like almost like you're holding a ball and then you just put it right on there. Now that we have our hands set, let's talk a little bit about where you're going to place the horn. Now, most beginners should start with playing, placing the bell on their leg. Now, we wanna make sure that it's not too far out or too far back. Just kind of find it right in the middle of your thigh and also be sure that the bell isn't facing right into your body because that's where all the sound is going to go and your stomach will dampen it. So make sure that when you have it in the middle of your thigh that the opening of the bell is facing out so that your sound is uninhibited and free flowing into the space next to you. For more advanced players, they can try playing with the bell off the leg. If you would like to begin playing off of the leg, um, we need to talk a little bit about that right hand placement again. Make sure that once you start experimenting with playing off of your leg that you have that great cup your knee or royalty wave finger position so that there aren't any gaps. And make sure that it's all the way on that far wall, just like we talked about if you're playing on your leg. Now, the horn can get heavy, and if you're playing off of your leg, sometimes we get lazy and our hand kind of closes off as our arm gets tired from holding the horn. So make sure that you are keeping that airway free of obstruction so that your beautiful sound can have somewhere to go. Now, we don't want to have the horn up too high unless you're playing Mahler or something that calls for bells up. A great way to just check to make sure that you have a good horn height is to just place it where you normally play on your leg and just lift up a couple of inches. When you first begin to play with the horn off of your leg, try just five to 10 minutes at a time and rest a little bit in between, maybe play the rest of your session on your leg or the next 10 minutes on your leg and then try again five to 10 minutes. We don't wanna go you know, an hour right, right off the bat holding our horn up. We wanna work up to being able to play with the horn off of our leg the entire time. So before we get to actually playing chunk number one, we need to establish a forte dynamic and the airstream that it requires to play such a loud dynamic. So using my hand to monitor my airflow, I'm going to take in an open O breath, like I would say the word, whoa. I'm going to hold my hand eight inches away from my face and blow out air fast enough to reach my hand. This is how much air I would need to achieve a forte dynamic as is required by chunk number one. It looks something like this. So the first exercise, chunk number one, begins on a middle C, which sounds like this. It then goes up to a G, which uses the same fingering, open, but is what we refer to as one partial higher. 
Now, the partials are within the harmonic series, so the partial G, which sounds like this, is just one partial higher than the note we previously played, which is C. Whenever you play any exercise in this book, keep in mind that we always want to maintain a beautiful sound no matter what we are playing, whether it's our band music, orchestra music, or etudes. Everything is music and everything should be beautiful. I like to think of the ideal horn sound as a stainless steel fist wrapped in purple velvet dipped in dark chocolate. My dad played horn professionally and that was something that he always told me that stuck with me for the rest of my life. So no matter what you're playing in this book, make sure that you always strive to have a beautiful sound. And a beautiful sound starts with a great breath. So before you start to play any exercise in this book, we want to make sure that we get in a good habit of always establishing the tempo before we start playing. It's kind of like a conveyor belt. Your tempo is the conveyor belt and you just kind of want to hop on as you start the exercise. So make sure that you always practice with the metronome. And if for some reason you don't have a metronome, which you should always have a metronome, you should establish your own inner metronome by deciding what your tempo is before you start playing. So maybe counting off internally, you know, one, two, three, play always have your internal metronome going. It will help you with your airflow and it will also help you keep a consistent steady tempo. All right, here we go with scale chunk number one. <laughs> 